All right, hey now, it's the Rob from 1061. Rob, wait. What? This is post to post. We gotta do something big, something out there. What were you thinking? Ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, children of all ages, Town Square Media and 1061 Kiss FM proudly bring to you your podcast champions of the world. He's the R to the O to the B. I'm S-T-E-V-E. We are your hosts with the most, bringing you everything wrestling related from post to post. It's the Rob from 1061 Kiss FM here with my tag team partner in podcasting. Hey guys, it's me, Steve, one contributor to 1061 Evansville.com. And I'm sure you can see behind us we've got our uh, mystery partner, our third man in our New Day tag team. Good morning, Gavin. Good morning. I am not booty. <laughs> He's certainly not booty. So you uh, made the request. You said you wanted to be on the show today. Yes. And I'm curious, what about Raw struck your curiosity or, or had something you wanted to talk about? Um, it's like three out of four weeks that I, I missed the London show. Raw has been really good lately, and I don't know what's happened, but it makes me want to not fast forward through all of it. <laughs> okay. Um, I'm going to agree with you partially. Here, here, here's what I think. Uh, I think that after WrestleMania, Raw came out real strong with two awesome Raws, back-to-back, lots of strong debuts. Uh, The London shows I never really like because they're pre-taped, and uh, I kind of just feel a lack of excitement from them. I I don't know what it is. It's just something about it I don't like. And then I felt like we're starting to get back to a normal feeling show yeah. uh, where the excitement's dying off. I didn't love this past show. What did you think, Steve? Um, I, I like that they're actually building up their forthcoming pay-per-view, but yeah, it's getting back to where Raw was in my mind. Okay, well, let's start with Gavin. What did you love about the show? I like that they're giving matches time to breathe and develop. Like Some of those yeah. matches had like two commercial breaks in it as opposed to like the just really quick flash matches almost. I really like they're giving... Sami Zayn and Ru Rusev like time to get out there and wrestle. I I watch AJ Styles wrestle all day long. Yeah, and they're giving him time to do that, and that was a big concern of mine. Is AJ Styles? They're bringing him in, but they're treating him like royalty, um, which is what he deserves. Yeah, no, I agree. So <laughs> I I'm very happy to see what they're doing with him and letting him like show his offense. I like they're using the phenomenal forearm as like a finish. Yeah. Um, that that way when, when he hits the Styles clash, it it, it means something. Also, we don't have to worry about like people breaking their necks on on, on a regular basis. So <laughs> that's always a good thing. Uh, I actually agree with what you said, but I want to kind of um, address it in that I feel like that's been a post WrestleMania thing too. Is the the <clears throat> pacing of the show is better in that matches are getting more match time. Yeah. And like I would rather have let's say four longer matches that are good than eight that are half as long and you know not as important. So I agree that their their time distribution uh post WrestleMania this past month has been fantastic. I agree with you there. Um the wrestling quality has also been good, although I didn't think Monday was a good example of that. I think the weeks prior were good. Yeah. Um when you've got um AJ Styles mixing it up with that that fatal four way match at the end of that first Raw mm-hmm. after WrestleMania. My God, did you see that, Gavin? Oh yes, that was fantastic. That was I thought great. that was potential match of the year. Okay, Steve, what did you take from the show? Because you said you, it seems like you didn't love it, or going back to normal at least. Yeah, I'm, I mean, I just I kind of feel like they're they're falling off a little bit. Um, I do like that the matches are getting the time that they need, um, but yeah, just the overall the Raw, I feel like. It's not as bad as it was before Mania, but I can see it getting back to there if they don't do the right things now. So here's here's kind of what I'm noticing about what's happening now. First of all, the Shane McMahon thing is still has it just has me fuming. I mean, I'm not yeah. going to spend a whole lot of time dwelling on it because I do every week post Raw. But I mean, the ang- the writing is insulting to the audience as far as they do all this to set up. You know, Shane cannot have control of Raw. And then just out of nowhere, just decide to give him control of the show. It makes no sense from a storyline point of view. I'll stop that. Um, what we are dealing with right now, though, is a unique situation in that every match going into payback is a match that was completely born in the past month. Yeah. Every, every angle was born post-WrestleMania. So uh, it's kind of an interesting way. Like For example, like I don't feel like Ziggler and Corbin, while I'm excited to see it, like, I don't feel like it's an actual feud yet. Or, um, like, okay, I'm excited to see Roman Reigns and AJ Styles because, you know, that's an exciting main event to me. But 
they haven't done anything to make me excited. It's just, it just they fell into a, a, a match that I'm excited for. Okay. They didn't write me into excitement. Does that make sense? <laughs> yeah, it does. You know? Well, with the exception of Sami Zayn and Kevin Owens, like, like that's a few, and there are, that has been by far the best thing they've had going on, where they're, they're acknowledging their NXT history and even going further mm-hmm. back in. When I'm watching, when I'm seeing Kevin Owens wearing a pro wrestling gorilla shirt in a, in a photo on a WWE show, I was like, what? They're acknowledging that they're not the only game in town and that there's <laughs> right. other alternative wrestling organizations that you can watch. And that they're acknowledging that they're making NXT like the minor leagues and not pretending like it didn't happen because that was one of the best feuds of that entire year before yeah. Kevin Owens came up and beat John Cena around this time last year. So the Sami Zayn and Kevin Owens feud, I wish it was for a title. Like I wish they would have done a one-on-one thing for the Intercontinental title at WrestleMania as opposed to... We, we all said that. As opposed well, to the ladder I actually said that they didn't need the title to be to, yeah. make, to make the story. But we all wanted Sami Zayn at, at uh, and, and Owens at WrestleMania. Yeah. I feel like Cause more cause more than the ladder match. Because it would have torn the it w- it would have just brought the show down. And I think there, I think that could be the the match of the night for payback. Probably, yeah. I, I think it's got potential too. Like I think something like AJ Styles, his matches usually have potential to be match of the night, but I don't think with Roman Reigns it will. I don't either. Um, <laughs> you know, so so there's that. Um, I mean, there's some things that they have done to make me excited, like the tag team tournament was good uh, because they've got a lot of new tag teams right now, uh, a lot of flash and, and excitement going on there. How I, you doing? I, I love that Enzo and Kaz are in the finals with Vaude Villains, who yes. are all new teams to the main roster. Yes. Uh, that's a great choice. I'm excited for that. Um, while I am excited for Owens and Zayn, I wish they would have done more on Raw to hook me for that. I am excited. I know their NXT history briefly, um, but I, I mean, they didn't do much on the show to get me excited for it. Um, and that's kind of my feeling with all of these matches coming up. Like, Ambrose and Jericho, uh, I don't feel like there's much there. I'm excited for it because it's two great workers that are going to have a great match, but they didn't do much to make me excited. Does anyone disagree? Um, I mean, they didn't have a, they don't have a lot of time doing twelve pay per views a year. But I mean, in the short amount of time, I'm more excited for Payback than I've been for any other second hand pay per view in recent memory. I am excited for Payback as well. I don't want to come off as a, I'm, I'm not excited for it. For for me, I'm I just can't find myself getting excited for Jericho matches anymore. I, That's and, fair. I can't I, really argue that. And after the Brock Lesnar let down at WrestleMania, I kind of can't get excited for Ambrose either like Ambrose has done nothing for me as of late I like the whole angle of leading up to Wrestlemania with the uh, getting all the weapons and that that match is pretty lackluster and just over the past month or so I feel like Ambrose has kind of just kind of cooled down quite a bit yeah I, I, can, I Which, definitely see what you're okay, saying okay well let me just throw this out there it's two guys who I know are capable of having great matches they haven't been doing it lately. You're you're right about that, but they're capable of it, and they could surprise us on Sunday, right? I mean, they no. could, they, they could, but Jericho just doesn't. I, Jericho just doesn't do a lot for me anymore. Fair enough. Um, anyone else have thoughts about the show Monday? Anything they saw excited um, them? I do. I I do want to give them kudos for giving China time the the tribute mm-hmm. they gave for China. I was surprised that they did anything, let alone a three minute video package. You know, I was talking to another friend about that. Uh, he was surprised that they did anything, and I'm not. Um, I'm I, not surprised either. Honestly. Yeah, she was such a huge uh, part of the company for such a long time that. Um, I thought it was going to be just that graphic at the beginning, yeah. but I thought it would be just that. But yeah, they, they gave her the music video treatment uh, oh. towards the end of the show. I think she's worthy of that. I'm not too terribly surprised Oh, she's definitely worthy. I just didn't think that WWE would do yeah, that. Yeah, I understand that. Um, well, and this is going to sound really crass and really horrible, but now, now that she's passed away, she can, I guess hurt the image of the WWE anymore. Yeah. So. That's that's what I said, because my friend said that Triple H was probably gritting his teeth showing that video, and I said, probably not, because now she can't do anything bad anymore. Like, now she's gone. Like, if anyone's going to be relieved, I would think it'd be Triple H. And, it, and uh, I, I know it's dark to go there, but it, it does suck. I mean, somebody pointed out that uh, for, for my, my generation, all they know is China is, like, the, the adult film star when she was doing drugs on reality TV shows. But there wasn't a lot of, like, internet or blogs back then when she was accomplishing first woman, inter- only yeah. woman intercontinental champion, Royal Rumble, uh, participant, women's champion, just doing all these things, just breaking new ground for women in wrestling. So there wasn't a lot of, but now it's like the TMZ era where, oh, she did the <laughs> WWE sex tape or whatever, and she had a thing with Sean X-Pac on, uh, and 
<laughs> so yeah. Yeah, no, I, I agree. I was not like a big China Mark. Steve seems like he was a huge fan of hers. When she would come on screen, I wouldn't get too terribly excited. But when I look back, th the importance she had on not just women's wrestling, but wrestling in general was was huge. Huge. There's no way around it. I, I, a surefire Hall of Famer from where I'm sitting. Anybody else have thoughts on the show that they think is worthy of being brought up? I think we covered everything. Who is Vince McMahon going to put in control of Raw? And does not matter? Yeah. Exactly. Why should we care at this point? You know what, Steve? You're right. Let's not even answer that question. Uh, we'll talk more about Payback uh, later in the week. We've also got another bonus episode where we're going to talk about some of the incredible... Uh, quote-unquote eras of wrestling as they're calling payback the beginning of a new era in wrestling let's look back at some of the uh crazy eras that have existed in uh the history of wrestling especially in wwe so be tuned uh, be tuned in we've got three episodes for you this week for myself for gavin Baby. and <laughs> and for steve what i would like right now is for all you fat out of shape evansville sweat hogs to keep the noise down while I show you how a real man ends a podcast. <laughs>